essays they write, that shit be militant than a motherfucker. Because they got an automatic beauty and 24-7 attitude with that dope. As long as they hide, they're going to come from the pl place of anger. So you have to learn how to read what they saying from the place of anger so we can use that emotional anger to our advantage. Because the, the motherfucker mad, he sees some shit another motherfucker ain't going to never see. <laughs> right? So the Stafford Act is the, um, the act passed to institute the continuity of government and the emergency relief for the people. Now, remember, they just had a hurricane The um, Ian came through here. They got another one on the way. They got the tide still ain't came back in mass yet because the motherfuckers coming. All of this shit about to happen at the same time they put in the national, this is what we want, this is what I want somebody, if you got somebody in the National Guard, tell them to keep their ear to the ground for this one, because I'm trying to um, see something. But they say that they're going to, they starting to um, put alerts on National Guard members, because, you know, domestic affairs, you can't use the military, you have to use the National Guard, that's their job, and, um, Unless we got invaded, a full-fledged invasion from somewhere, the National Guard job is to police the people. Anybody come in other than them, they might get dealt with. So the National Guard is supposed to be um, um, reinforcing their locations so that they can come out. And the plan is to, I don't know, it's going to be 30 minutes. I don't know if it's going to be 30 or 90 days. I don't know what the time frame, but... They say that it's coming soon. It's supposed to be two weeks. So they saying stock up for two weeks. I'm watching this shit, and it's, it looks like it's about to happen. All of the signs of the mass, the last of the old push of labor, is at the helm. So well, I guess are we one disaster away? Um, the next hurricane could do it. A tidal wave could do it. Another earthquake could do it. Anything can. Um, start implementing those FEMA um, um, transitional teams into the areas. <coughs> All that government shit is a show. It's a charade. It's a shit show. It's not a good one either. I'd rather watch one of them um, um, Olympus is fall and there's a more interesting political drama than the one that's playing out. It's like watching paint dry. This shit is so... I mean like... How do you have your press secretary doing a live Q&A, never leave the podium and change clothes two and three times, and nobody fucking notices this shit? So this is the, the people we dealing with is the ones that's not noticing that simple shit, right? You got the Joe Biden with the earlobe start the motherfucking interview off. These motherfuckers switching to the tiny ear Joe Biden and y'all never notices it. Nobody, the people don't notice that shit. They be switching them up in real, like in the middle of the same news broadcast. They switch the motherfucker from one screen to another screen and nobody notice it. They just be playing with y'all. Like how dumb can these people be? Well, they taught us, so if we done, they taught us well. That's one thing. I'm just like, I don't understand why people don't see this shit. So, um, once the Stafford Act or the uh, state of emergency is drawn or the disaster relief is drawn out and the FEMA is activated, this is going to be, if it's a national FEMA activation, we ain't going back to the charade no more. The gig would be up. You know, so um, that's what we're dealing with. And they still ain't talking about those cities in Florida with the bodies that was floating down the street, smelling up the community and shit. They still ain't talking about that in the news. So I don't know. I, I'm only getting that from people that's in Florida saying it. I don't know if it's true. I ain't in Florida. Yeah, this whole system, they all cashing out. Because they gotta look, they can sell a catalog, get the money for it now. Cause when the system turned around, they gonna automatically um, be restored the rights to the product that they created. <clears throat> All that shit. Everybody gotta get what they heard. 
You can't take nobody's. Uh, that's why they're doing it. They dumped them catalogs because the uh, the taking the control from the uh, majors, your Sony's and um, all them motherfuckers that's running the shit. Arista, um, Sony, Warner Brothers. So if the artists ever want to get, they have to dump those catalogs so that they don't. They can't be lucrative for the falling company once they get rid of them. Once all of the artists get rid of them and they reproduce the product on their own, uh, re-record -re -re their recordings, it kills the motherfuckers. Now, you sitting there holding some worthless shit because you can't even do nothing with it because they re-recorded it, you dumbasses. So the artist is getting hip to the loophole that if they reproduce the product after they leave the sever with the company, that they can always claim the original creation and the company only got a duplicate at that point because whichever one is with the artist is the original. The artist is the originator, so whichever one he has is the original. And he, if he changed one or two instruments, they fucked. Because now they can't, they passing off what you would call a, 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 a forged copy. Because the artist is the, the, the uh, product he putting out is the original because the artist is the originator. You, you got secondhand property um, from when he had a producer producing the the copy. But the original stays with the artist because it's part of who the artist is. When you stop these motherfuckers from stealing one way or another, we teach these some bitches a lesson. I'm telling you, motherfuckers ain't dumb as we used to be. And we ain't dumb as they think. Just because we talk with a country draw don't mean we won't pop that ass with the facts. <clears throat> right? <clears throat> So I'm um, thinking about um, doing a um, original setup of the Morris Science Temple because what we what we missing in today's civics understanding is the original structure of the Morris Science Temple and in the, in the relationship between Noble Draw Ali and the legal fiction. They, the legal fiction was never supposed to put no, nobody under the jurisdiction, but somebody backdoored them. So I'm thinking about going over the structure and how it worked, but I'm thinking about which references I want to use um, for the um, for the um, lecture. Because once you understand the structure of tribe and that the organic people, anytime we set up a structure, ours is superior because we we de jure. We the rightful motherfuckers to administer government over here. They only over here by treaty agreement. Now their treaties are expired and we've already told them that it's time to kick rocks. So if the treaties are all expired and then they couldn't extend them any longer for nine performance because they can't find a treaty in the books that they kept even kept up one agreement. Everything they ever agreed to. They went back on it from the Constitution when they created the second Constitution to undermine the first Constitution, had us operating in a bipartite system, a two-part, two-tier system that was already part of a three-tier system, right? Now, they got us believing that Washington, D.C. got anything to do with us. It's a foreign enclave. That's an embassy. So somebody who had parked over here in the embassy and was doing business like they ran this bitch. Because nobody over here was telling them, you know, you can't do this or you can't do that because none of our people understood what was going on. So when we go back and look at the historical record, you see what they did. The first thing they did was gave us the Bible. Then they taught us how to read. They language, though. They taught us how to speak English. They language. So all that shit was a well-orchestrated trap. <clears throat> In law, it's this thing called... Uh, Style and title. When you're talking about uh, the person, the representation of the person in his rightful written form, right? <clears throat> so when they tell you about uh, the United States of America in all caps, is not United States of America of we the people with the capital U, the capital S, and the capital A, and the rest lowercase letters in a, what we call uh, italicized script. That's not the same people, but they lead you to believe that they're the same entity. <clears throat> as long as you believe they're the same entity, you're not questioning their authority or their jurisdiction. 
And as long as jurisdiction don't come up, proceedings don't stop. But when jurisdiction come up, no matter what what venue or nexus of law, everything got to stop till that shit is certified. So how can you establish your jurisdiction over a legal fiction by holding the legal person or the jure person, the sovereign, in reprisal for what you saying the legal fiction did? Make it make sense. So you holding me for what you saying that the legal fiction did, right? All of it was a, was weaponized to oppress us. And none of this shit was an accident. When I be telling y'all shit that this none of this shit is an accident. They did this shit on purpose. To make us suffer was they deaf oaf. They had a deaf oaf to make our labors hard, our work pay off little, and our struggle be great. That was a motherfucking agreement. That was part of the um feather versus feds philosophy. Is it to go who's gonna win? The morals of the dogma. The ones who follow the moral code are the one who gets stuck chasing motherfucking dogmatic pursuits. You know? The dog is just sniffing out the bunny and the bunny gone down the hole. But the reality of it is, is fuck that rabbit and fuck that hole. Right? I own the whole goddamn field that the hole is in. Right? It's, so it's like that. We are not paying attention to so much shit. I'm like, God damn. I know I'm not that much smarter than these people out here because they got all A's and I got D's and C's and E's. So I know I ain't the smartest motherfucker. This motherfucker smarter than me out there that can see this shit better than me. Somebody not, somebody just scared to talk. Somebody just scared to talk. <clears throat> I don't, I ain't got no problem telling y'all what's going on. My only problem is, is I don't want to do the work for a bunch of motherfuckers that don't want to do the work for themselves. You had nobody had no idea to try to get themselves from under the oppressor. Everybody was going along to get along because you thought them motherfuckers was right. When you find out they're not even right, they're not in the right. They're not right. They're not on the right side. Everything they do is wrong to oppress us. It's all been weaponized to oppress us, right? I had a Q drop. The Q drop. I'm gonna post it to check the. Check my posts after I get done with this um, commentary right here because it was a Q drop with Yaku. And it's telling you in the Q drop, Enlil, what Enlil wanted and what Enki wanted. Enlil didn't never want the human to wake up. Enki wanted them to see it because he knew that the creation was going to surpass the creator. <clears throat> uh, it's a Q drop, literally, or uh, one of those. Um, it was either a Q drop or a truth social. And they got a drawing of the big head scientists and they say, uh, <clears throat> they say, um, let me introduce you to the creator of humankind. And then it goes into the, all of that shit. Now, it's one thing missing though. <laughs> one thing missing. I just thought about it. When they talking about it, they never called him Yaku. That's one thing that's missing. And they never tell you that um, they was creating you to wake up at the close of the age and realize your highest potential is possible with self-discipline. Right? Don't take sides in that shit. Two motherfuckers fighting, just don't take sides. Right? Especially like That's like... There's four siblings in the house. Two of them get in the fight. Why are we taking sides? Break that shit up. Right? Or let them rumble. And then when they get done, they're going to be huffing and puffing. And two hours later, they're going to be playing again. We're not paying attention to how we learn. We're not paying attention to warfare. We're not paying attention to psychological operations. The psychological operations, I can understand, because that's like a special, specialized field of study. And everybody can't, um, can't unravel that shit because you got to get psychology. Then you got to understand psychological profiling and how psychological profiling is derived from the psychological makeup of the different people. 
The psychological makeup generates the certain character types that make you predisposed for certain things when you taught certain information. They knew all this shit about you, and we didn't. We ain't know none of that shit when my mama was little. We ain't know about no about no Carl Jung. We ain't know about no motherfucking Albert Einstein until we heard the name, but we ain't really know nothing about quantum physics, or metaphysics, um, or quantum mechanics. You ain't know nothing about the occult sciences. The shit Blavatsky talk about, the average motherfucker not finna go do... the Just her book reference alone, um, the, the companion to the secret doctrine to make 99% of us not want to ever try to write that book. They're gonna never try to write that. That, that ain't even got nothing to do with ISIS Unveiled. Because if we do, had to go write that book and we have to go do all of the research she did, 99% of us not gonna do it. You need somebody with a, a peculiarity for information with a certain um, artistic pursuit of that information like me. Somebody they said was retarded. That's going to go that extra mile to put the pieces to the puzzle together to put together a seminal work like the Secret Doctrine, Isis Unveiled, or like the works of Harold Percival. 90% of you have never heard of Harold Percival, Right. I'm not going to even get into his information because we got Rudolf Steiner coming off of the theosophy and coming into um, Scientology, coming and put anthroposophy together. Then you got uh, just Dianetics alone. It's billed as the user's manual for the, for the mind. And it's been on airing on the TV since the 80s, and very few of us that look like us ever picked the book up to examine the contents to determine the context of the information to find out if it's of any valuable use. And we are dispensing with a valuable research tool in the original book, Dianetics. The rest of that shit, some bullshit, except for the magazines was out cold that they was putting out in the early 2000s, the late 90s. <clears throat> I wrote a couple articles. Well, in the mid nineties, going into the two thousands, they had a magazine. I forgot the name of it, but I had wrote a couple of articles based off certain stuff they was writing in there about the history of psychology, you know. Then um you had um Manly P. Hall. Manly P. Hall was the Masonic keeper of records. So everything he said Every book that he put out, every lecture he did, he dropping mad fucking jewels as to what the motherfuckers is doing and how to read the shit they doing. But we not going to read that shit. I, um, I read all of the um, Maurice Doriel, um, um, Temple of the White Brotherhood. I read all that material. Right. That shit out cold. But those are pamphlets. You would probably get us to read them. Um, he also translated um, Emerald Tablets of Thoth, right? And so, <clears throat> Uncle Joe, <laughs> Uncle Joe, Uncle Joe, Uncle Joe. Hey, we had a teacher named Mr. Foot. His first name was Joe, and we used to tease him and call him Old Joe from Kokomo, got potatoes from Idaho. And we used to call him Uncle Joe and think it was funny as hell. That was, I don't know why is it fun. We had a couple of, uh, my father had a couple friends named Joe we called Uncle Joe, but that was always some funny shit to us. <laughs> yeah. They, we finna kill that system. They don't want to get an artist they shit. So fuck it. Make that shit be worthless. <laughs> She's talking about the, the baby can't, uh, showing his real alien form. I don't none of that shit surprised me. They got a lot of motherfuckers that look human that ain't human. Some of them is in disguise, and some of them just look like us, but they ain't like us. Now remember, the Pueblo Indians left. They whole village left. 
all yeah. of a sudden they changed the name from Calford to Pueblo. Yeah. Hmm. And then I wonder said, if anything is connecting here. Wait, wait, oh, Rod. The funny part about it, they came and put this monument, this monument, um, this Confederate monument in Hemming Plaza. They came and set that there. So, look, 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 hear me out, Rod. Right? Mm -hmm. Hear me out. I say the 62 foot um, Vermont granite monument, which is topped with a bronze statue of a Confederate soldier in a winter uniform, um, was installed in Hemming um, Park in 1898 after the park's namesake, Civil War veteran. Charles C. Hemming donated the statue. And hold on, Rod. Uncle Rod. Um, three years later, it caught fire. And they said that statue, the bottom of it, was glowing red. That's a hot ass fire. Look, how hot a fire got to be for metal to be uh, glowing red? Yeah, the, the statue was um, just took it from here in 2020. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's the crazy part about it. And uh, hold on, on Rod, another thing: the the great, um, the great fight you could.